Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Today we're going to look at uh, uh, Colossians, the second chapter, verses 8 through 10. Colossians 2, verses 8 through 10. I believe this message will, will speak to your heart. I believe this message this morning will change your life. Amen? I believe that this message uh, is powerful. And uh, I, I was uh, 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 studying and studying and studying for this. And uh, uh, as, I, as I spent time with God, I was, I was uh, just amazed at, 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 at how smart, uh, how not so smart I guess I am. Let me feel, feel like that. I'm not that smart. God is a lot smarter than me. Amen? And he was, he was showing me things that, uh, that I, I think are uh, just amazing. And so uh, today I want to talk on the topic of full to complete. And uh, I was going to put a title on, uh, on this, uh, like a little subtitle, Stop Compe Competing with Complete. It was going to be my little subtitle. But uh, I was thinking about the, the word, the wording of that, and I thought that, well, maybe people wouldn't understand that. But often we are competing with the work that God is doing in us, that Jesus Christ himself is doing in us. We begin to compete with those things. But let's dig right into the word this morning in Colossians 2, verses 8 through 10. And it says uh, right there, if we could read together, uh, uh, beware lest any spo man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the, the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power let, let us just pray Father, Lord, I pray that you touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Open up our mind, our eyes, our ears, and our heart, Lord, that we might see, hear, know, and understand something new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, the first word I have for you this morning is fullness. Uh, fullness. <laughs> My display is just a distraction. <laughs> Because often what we display to the world around us is really a distraction uh, to, to, to get people to look away from what, what really is happening in our life. And, and, uh, and the question I have for you this morning is, are you full or are you empty? Uh, you know, because uh, we, we, we have, what we have inside of us, this, this salvation, this, this Jesus in me, is, is not just a feeling, amen? It's not about a feeling, it's about a walking, okay? Uh, I'm, I, I must begin to walk out what I have inside of me. And sometimes uh, what, what goes on inside of us when Christ comes into our life and changes things, he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily make, it, make us feel good, okay? Sometimes he doesn't want you to feel good. Matter of fact, he wants to, to change you. He wants to stir you up. He wants to uh, create in you something that you, you didn't have before. He wants to, to raise you up, amen, out of a miry pit. He wants to turn your way around this morning. Uh, you know, it's interesting that Jesus walked in complete authority. Uh, in him was all the power, right? Uh, from beginning to the end. He was there at the beginning when creation started. And he's going to be there at the end, whenever the end is and whatever that looks like for our life or even for the end of the world. He is there. But it, it says in him was the fullness of of the Godhead bodily. So inside of him was, was all Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He was all man, and he was all God. And it's very powerful when you think about that. But, but we, 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 as a Christian, we don't really understand that in us. In us is the same anointing that was on Christ. In us is the Spirit of God. In us is something that's very powerful and very exciting for us to walk out. Uh, 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 God is always creative. I, I don't ever, I've never seen God not be creative about something. God is always about the business of creating in us something new. All right? Matter of fact, if I got up this morning 
and I opened my Bible and I didn't see something new, something striking come out and want to change something in me, then I, I probably didn't hear from God this morning because he wants to change something. I, I think if very, from the very beginning when God walked in the garden with Adam, he was walking with him and showing him something new every day. I don't think it was the same conversation every day. I mean, if I was talking with God every single day, I think that there would be... A, a, uh, something fresh, something exciting, something creative happening in my life because he would be changing me just by me merely being walking with him, me being, being right beside him. I would be changed, amen? There would be something happening in my life which is, 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 is tremendous when you think about it. But I'm, then I go back and I remember how my walk with him has been up to this point. Has it been exciting? Have I learned something new today? Have I been excited to go to church? Have I been excited to, to pray a prayer? Have I been excited when I open the word of God? Am I excited about him changing me, amen? About letting the word of God come in and, and stir up something inside of me and make me different, make me whole, make me transform me, amen? In other words, I'm not taking information in, I'm taking what, what is in me, the, the spirit of God in me and letting it transform what, what's around me, amen? Woo. Uh, so <laughs> do you think God <laughs> ever says, uh, you know, because God is creative. You know, God created this, this little thing called gravity. You ever, you ever felt gravity before? I mean, I, the older I get, the, the lower things seem to fall on me. And it's like I have to struggle to keep things going in the right direction. But what if God said, you know what? I, I, I'm going to change my mind about that. I'm going to make that go the other way. <laughs> we would all, some of our problems would float off the earth, I'm telling you right now. But, but, but God, God's, God is creative, right? He created gravity and we walk in it every day, and we don't really appreciate it all the time, but, but it's always there and always a, a constant in all of our lives. And, uh, and it's, it's amazing, though, when you think about gravity, we think about it, it holds me to the ground, but what about the skyscrapers and what about uh, airplanes and about all different kind of things that go on that gravity uh, holds in place and, and makes things work right? But, but God knew about that. He thought about that. He created that. He's the one that design gravity. I mean, come on. Uh, I, I, I think about that and I, I just go, whoa. And, uh, but <laughs> I'm glad he doesn't just flip it today. Flip the switch. Let's go the other way with that gravity thing, right? I trust God's judgment in my life though. Amen. I trust his judgment in my life uh, because God is good. Amen. God is moving me to good, good things. <laughs> There might be less trouble in my life if God would flip that. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, I, I wrote this down, and I, uh, I actually posted it up on Facebook last night. I, I actually wrote this for uh, the message that I, I talked about on Friday. Uh, but it says, our old solutions lead us to old destinations. Uh, our old solutions lead us to old destinations. And often in our life, I don't know, we just get comfortable going to the same place, trying to get the same answer, trying to do the same thing over and over and over. And we're like, oh my goodness, I just, just and I keep doing it over and over and over now, not willing to change. But we're always going to find ourselves back in the same place if we always do the same thing. Amen. And that's what old destinations look like. They look like the same place you're at now sometimes in my life. I'll just speak for myself. Sometimes I end up in the same place over and over again with the same people doing the same thing wondering why it, nothing's ever changed. And I'm going to tell you that's because I haven't changed. Amen? I got I to gotta do what's not comfortable, Chris. Because what you do when you go to old destinations for the same solution and find yourself in the same place, it's because that's where you're comfortable at. Right? You end up you're comfortable because you're, you stay where you're comfortable. You don't really want to go where it's uncomfortable. Like even to stand behind a pulpit like this this morning is uncomfortable. But God has called me to the uncomfortable place so that he can change me. Amen. And ultimately, I think, change the kingdom of God. Uh, that's what this is all about. Amen. Not my comfort. Right? It's not about my comfort. It's about his work in me. Amen. And that's, that's never going to be comfortable because he's always going to push me a little bit. Amen. Amen. I'm, who's thankful for the push of God, yeah, of God in your life? I'm glad that God pushes me. Amen. I'm glad that God is moving me. I'm glad that God doesn't want to leave me where I am. I'm glad he wants me to move me forward. He, he, he wants to pull me. Sometimes I need a, a swift kick like this. Okay. Because he wants to move us. Amen. And sometimes it looks like a kick or feels like a kick or feels a little sore sometimes the day after. But you know what? He's trying to move me. Amen. My response to the Word of God, it, my response comes from a conclusion that I have made in my life. What, what I think, what the answer I think I have 
That's my response. That's, that's my response. And, 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 and we, have to, we have to challenge that. I, I, I like to say it like this. I always say I have to challenge my truth against the truth that I find in the Word of God because what I believe to be true, what I believe to be foundational in my life, is, is what I stand on. It's what I walk on. That's, where I, that's where I, why I am to who I am. That's, that's, that's the problem that we have, right? Uh, I must become satisfied with God's providence in my life. God's providence in my life is my satisfaction, <laughs> okay? I, I, I got to look for his providence. So I got to look for his provision. I got to look for his way. I got to look for uh, what he's doing, amen? I got I to gotta, I gotta get tuned in right, right? Uh, <laughs> there... It, there, there's, there's a verse that says there's no temptation, right, that's come upon us that, has, that is not common to man. In other words, somebody's already been tempted with what we've been tempted with. Somebody's already been tried the way we've been tried. There's been things happening in my life that have always been the, the, just like somebody else may have. Matter of fact, uh, I, heard a, I heard a preacher say uh, not too long ago, he said, someone would, like, would really like your life. <laughs> someone would be happy with your life, okay, and you think you've got it all bad, got it real bad, and there's stuff going on, but someone somewhere would really be happy with your life, and that and they really like your, your problems and your troubles, and they like to trade in their troubles for your troubles because your troubles really aren't that bad, but you think they're really bad, so then they are bad. Hmm. Nothing more. See, God is looking for somebody to see the treasure that he is in our life and come to a place where we just want to worship him. Right? We just want to worship him. Not, 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 not worship him and stay the same though, right? Worship him because of the change he's doing in me. I worship him because he is, he is changing me. Amen? <laughs> My happiness is already here. My happiness is already here. He's, he's in me. Amen? Jesus is my happiness. It's not from outside, but it's rather on the inside of me already. Jesus is a source of all of my conclusions. I want to I want to move on to a word called complete. Okay, uh, uh, complete is not a feeling but a knowing. Uh, uh, a step first, a walk second, and then a run. Right? It's a knowing. Right? It's a knowing, and 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 and, and completeness comes from really. A, it's a little word called faith. I cannot receive Christ without faith. I must have faith to receive him. Amen? And uh, so the word says, it says, and you are complete in him. You are complete in him. Complete in Jesus, right? And then there's the comma, so we have to think about that for a second. You're complete in him, right? And then, and then it goes on to say, which is the head of all principality and power. Aren't you glad that Jesus is the head of all principality and power? Amen. I want to I want to dig into that just a little bit. Uh, to, to find for me the word, I want to give you a question. What is the what is the when I say the word complete? Define that for me in your life. Just think about that for a second. What is it in the context of your life? What is it that makes you complete? See, think about it against your struggle. Think about it against your you know, what you think about. Think about it as how you live your life out. Think about all of those things. Think about that for a second. What what would it take for you to say without hesitation or, rest- or restriction, I am complete? What would it take? See, because in my life, I think about, well, if I had this and that and this and that and all those things there, then I would be complete, see? And, and, and it, just thinking naturally, but, but, but Christian, as a Christian, right, those things are not the things that complete me. I am already complete because I have Jesus in me. And see, but, but my, my push is, the push is to begin to live that out, though, when you don't feel it. Are you with me? That's, don't, let's live it out even though I don't feel it, right? Uh, I believe the reason your answer all of our answers would vary to that question. What makes me complete? All of our answers would vary if we were really honest. All right? We'd say, oh, it's Jesus makes me complete. We would all say that. But I'm going to tell you, if you're really honest with me this morning, every, every one of us would have a different answer. Every one of us would have something that we would say. If Jesus would just fix this, if that wouldn't have happened, 
if this is going to happen, if my, my, all these things, see? Uh, but I believe the reason your definition of complete, it's, it's, it's always seems like the definition, at least in my life, I'll, I'll speak to myself, I'll put a mirror up here. If I speak to myself, my, my definition of complete is always relegated to how I feel. That's what happens. It goes back to my feelings. You know, it, it, we can even do this. Uh, we, uh, I, I know when I got married, I always said, uh, you know, Joanne completes me. But you know what? She, that's too big of a chore for her. <laughs> Cause, okay, because, because, and it's like, and if, and if, and if I complete her, then it's too big of a chore for me. I can't complete her. She can't complete me because I'm already complete in Christ. See, see, and it really, I really, if I break that apart, really, and get down a little bit into there, I would go back and say. It comes back to wholeness, right? It comes back to uh, a knowing that I'm whole of, and then beginning to feel. Because a feeling is a caboose of, uh, of a choice that we make, right? I don't feel and then and leave my life. I'm not going to walk around my life by my feelings, okay? I'm going to walk around by making choices. And, and even Joanne, when I, when I met her when I was 16 years old, I looked across the gym and I seen those pink sweatpants and I made a choice, right? to go and say hi to her, okay? And, and she didn't like me, and I had to chase her for like, I don't know, six, seven years before she actually started to like me. Matter of fact, I don't really know if she likes me now, but <laughs> I, I just keep showing up every day, okay? And I, I keep working, and I keep trying, and you know what? I, it, but I made a choice, amen, to go and chase after her, to go say hi. It was a decision. And, and so I can say that my feelings... Okay, initially, we're not, we're not love, okay? They weren't love because I liked pink sweatpants. I liked the way they looked on her. But I'm going to tell you, that was not, it was not about the, fe- it, was, it was a feeling then, but a decision had to be made. And I'm going to tell you, it isn't always easy to come back to a decision to love, amen? A decision to know who I am, amen? Even the decision to say that I am a child of God is a choice I must make today, amen? I must make a choice because Jesus completes me. I, I, I want to keep going. I'm going to go a little deeper on this. I got I to gotta stick in a, uh, a little deeper here. Uh, basically, what we have in our life is, is called a conflict over control. That's what we have. We, we have a conflict over control because I want to control, but Jesus is in control. I want to control, but Jesus is in control. And we have this, this control. This, uh, uh, the conflict over control is a key debate for us to consider for completion, okay? Because if I'm in control, then I'm not completed through Christ. But if Christ is in control, then I'm completed because I'm allowing him to work in my life. I'm allowing him to, to guide and direct my steps, amen? Uh, you know, uh, often in our life, in my life anyways, I, I have this rule, and I, I used to say it a lot when we were in youth group, but I, I would have the 131 rule, which is Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. It says, it says, when God looked over all that he had made, he said, it is good. But he didn't just say it was good. He said it was very good. And often in our life, we come to a, the, the conclusion that I'm not good enough. Amen? I'm not uh, all right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a flawed uh, a creation. I'm a something. God messed up something when he made me. But we, we got to come to a place where we really understand that God made me exactly the way I need to be made. He's working everything out according to his will in my life. And I know that even the situations, circumstances that I go through right now in my life, God is going to make something beautiful happen because he work, takes everything and he works it out for good because I love him, right? That's what it says, Romans 8, 28. Because I love him, he's going to work everything in my life out for good. It may not feel good right now. It may not, I may not like the way it feels, but I know that he's working it out in my life. Amen? Conflict over control. Jesus, I give you control of my life. That's what being saved is. And that's what I did when I got saved. I said, I said, Jesus, I need a savior, right? And a savior means he's gonna come in and save me. <laughs> he's gonna change something, right? He's gonna lift me up out of a pit. He's gonna set my feet on a rock and establish my direction. Jesus is the head of all power. I, I just I want to go back there for a second, but he's the head of all power. There is no power on earth or in heaven that, that Jesus is not the head of. That's what faith says. I say, I say that in faith because sometimes I don't believe it. Come on. Uh, sometimes I don't believe it, but I'm going to tell you Jesus is the head of all principality and power because it says it in his word. Amen? We just read that, right? <laughs> he... My life is in his hands. Come on, really, it is. My life is in his I mean, not just this life, this, but my eternal existence depends upon him, amen? My eternal existence depends upon him. My life 
is in His hands. It really is. All the way to the end of whatever that timeline looks like. And it's eternity, I'm going to tell you. And my life is in His hands. My life is in His hands. I can trust Him with that, but I can't trust Him with this. See, that's the struggle. The conflict of control. You know, uh, it was around 14 years ago, the 11th of January. My brother's birthday was 11th of January, but it was he, he passed away in December, around 14 years ago. And at that moment, my, uh, I wasn't in the room when it happened. I was on a job in Mississippi. And uh, my, my oldest son, he was around 14, 15 years old at that time. He, my brother had breathed his last, and uh, they, they had gathered around him, and they had prayed a little bit, and... Uh, I was on the phone. Uh, Joanne had called me, and, uh, and I sat in. I remember sitting. In, I remember the exact where I was. I was in pulling into the. I pulled in and sat in the hotel parking lot for about an hour and a half. Just sat in my car. I was like, and the minute, the moment he passed away, the very moment I was on the phone, and the spirit of God just flooded into my into the car, and I'll never forget. Uh, that moment. I'll never forget the feeling of comfort that I got from the presence of God. And I, I, I remember this uh, so vividly because uh, it, it's such a great loss. You know, he was very young, uh, young, young. And, and uh, you know, I used to tell him everything. I used to talk to him. He'd listen to me. I don't know why he'd listen to me, but he was, he was not like uh, most of you guys. He'd listen. And uh, <laughs> And, and he would listen to me, and he would listen to all my ideas and my, my, my sermon ideas, and I would preach to him. And, you know, he didn't ever live it out, but I preached it to him. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but I, but my, my oldest son, he was, he was 14, 15 years old, and as soon as this, he, he had passed away, he took his Bible, and I, I believe that it was uh, the providence of God, because I don't know how he would have been this smart. But he took his Bible, and he, he, he opened it up to 2 Corinthians 1 verses uh, 3 and 4 and he read this out loud to my, my dad and he said it says blessed be the God blessed be God a comma there it says blessed be God because God is you know we, we should bless God amen with our life it said blessed be God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> I like the fact that there's a, a big F on Father there because He's the Father of Jesus. Blessed be God, right? The Father of Jesus. The Father of mercies. <laughs> he's the Father of Jesus and He's the Father of mercy. Aren't you glad for the mercy of God in your life? Aren't you glad that, that, that our God is a good, good Father? Aren't you glad? Uh, uh, and, the, and it says, there's a comma there, uh, Father of mercies, and it says, and the God of all comfort. God of all comfort. See, see, we see here declaration versus response, okay? Blessed be God is my response. I bless God with my life. Father is the declaration of, my, of who he is in my life, right? Uh, the Lord Jesus, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord of my life. I declare that in my life over my circumstances. And he's a father of mercies. Uh, and then, and then, and and he's the God of all comfort. See, see, I declare those things into my life, into my situations. And then it says in in verse four, "Who comforteth us in all our tribulation?" He's the comfort in the middle of the tribulation, right? Because when you're breathing, okay. Come on, when you're breathing, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have uh, uh, stuff coming in your life. You're always going to have stuff in your life. You're never going to be absent from stuff, okay, going on in your life. Because, because the only place that I know of where there's no conflict is when you're in a grave, in a cemetery, okay? Otherwise, you're going to have kids. You're going to have uh, snow. You're going to have cold. You're going to have heat. You're going to have a car problem. You're going to have a, uh, an employee. You're going to have a, uh, uh, somebody, uh, a co-worker. You're going to have a husband. You're going to have a wife. Come on, there's going to be something going on in your life that's going to cause conflict. But blessed be God, the Father, the, Lord, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, all right, the, 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 the one that gives us comfort. Blessed be him 
who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may, see, this is the part here, because uh, it says, uh, we want the comfort in our tribulation, but then it gives us a task, right? It says that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Any trouble. Not, not just the kind of trouble that I got, but any trouble. My comfort, right, is in the fact that I can give out what I have received. Amen? Because that's my job. Amen? To go and give comfort. All right? And so, so then, I, then I'm just going to read this a little bit more. Uh, uh, that by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. See, my comfort that I have received from him is to give away to another. Amen? I, I, can, I can go through another circumstance. Amen? And I can be comforting someone else in the middle of my circumstance because I have the God of all power living in me. Amen? Uh, he, he is our, our comfort in trouble, right? <laughs> Jesus, I know you're here in me now, in this moment. He's in me now in the moment, amen? He's, he's a God that's in my now moment. He's a, the God in my now struggle. He's the God in my now thing that's going on in my life. He's not a God of yesterday. He's not my God of tomorrow. He's the God of now. My life is made up of now. I can't live tomorrow, today. I, gotta, I can't live yesterday even though I choose to live there sometimes. I must live in the now moment. If I can't live in the now moment, I'll never be happy. Amen? Because this is where happiness is. As soon as I'm breathing right now, I should be happy now. Amen? In, in the middle of my trouble, He is my consolation. He's my comfort. So that I can be a comfort to another is the consolation. See? See, it's not that I'm going through something that God's going to deliver me of it. See, that's what we think. If when God delivers me of this, I'll be happy because God did a great thing and good work in my life. But I'm going to tell you, that's not the, the goal. The goal is to be going through it like this and being, I'm being a consolation for somebody else. I'm being a comfort for someone else's life. Isn't that what Christian, a Christian should look like? Let me pray for you. I can't pray for them because I don't feel good about it. You know, I have the God of all power in me, or don't I? See, we gotta, we got to form a conclusion this morning. This is a great... <laughs> this is a, if I had a tape measure, if I had a balance, okay? This is the reason I bring this scripture to you this morning is because it's a great way to measure yourself in how complete you are in Christ, okay? Because I can't measure you. I don't want you to measure you, yourself by myself, but I want you to think about this for a second. Put yourself in the balance this morning. How complete are you in Christ? Look at it. Look at it and, and decide this morning. <laughs> I'm living in the middle of my circumstance. See, see, this is the problem. We, we live in the middle of our circumstance rather than declare to our circumstance that I'm living with the comfort. <laughs> think, think about that. I can't just live in the middle of a circumstance and say, God is God, is God, God is good. No, I declare to my circumstance that my, the God of all comfort is living in me. I'm going to live it out, amen? Because in me, Jesus, the head of all principality and power, lives in me. He lives in me. I will not worship my circumstance. I will worship my Savior. That's, that's what Christian, that's a Christian for you. Amen? That's what people look for. They look for you. And that's, why they, that's why they go, what's wrong with that person? He's, he's got comfort, and in, in, in the middle of that, God must be real. And He is real. He is real. Uh, let me give you another word. Rudimentary. Rudimentary. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to say, <laughs> I wanted to say uh, what's that, uh, that, that elementary Watson, but I didn't want to say that because I figured I was in the Bible, so I used the word rudimentary. Because rudimentary, really, really all it means is it's a way of thinking, 
right? And, 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 and in, this, in this verse it says, we shouldn't think like the world, we should think like a Christian, right? We should think like children of God. And so it's rudimentary, right? It says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit after the tradition of men. Tradition of men, tradition of men, tradition of men, tradition of men. Think about this. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, 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 after the rudiments of the world and not after, there's a comma there, after the rudiments of the world, comma, think about that, after the rudiments of the world, which comes from the tradition of men, because somebody, mama, daddy, baba, uh, grandparents, somebody, somebody taught somebody else something pretty soon, something else happened, something else happened pretty soon, you know, we got what we call a rat race, and pretty soon everybody has to go to get up and go to school in the morning and learn how to be workers, because that's what school is really all about, is teaching our kids to be workers so they can go to work eight hours a day, come back home, and go, and do what they what we always do, we get up in the morning, go to work, come back home, and do this. Uh, we get this big old circle, and pretty soon everything's just going crazy, and we ain't got no time for nothing because everything's so busy and going, 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 going. But that's the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. All of that is not after Christ. <laughs> the doctrine of men, or the doctrine of a life in Christ, that's the balance truth, right? If we, were, if we were going to go to court today, if we were going to go to court, if you were going to go to court today, uh, I would suggest that you would take a lawyer with you, right? Because when you go to court, there are other lawyers there, and there's a judge there that is going to, he's going to say, uh, fill out this affidavit, and we're going to go, I've never filled an affidavit out before. How do you do that? And he would go, Seriously? You're defending yourself? See, that's what we, we do. We go, <laughs> we go, I don't understand it. But we have a lawyer who lives inside of us, and his name is Jesus. Amen? I don't have to worry. Matter of fact, right now when I pray, there's an attorney in heaven that's interceding for my, on my behalf. He's speaking to, the, to, to God right on his right-hand side. He's going, he's going uh, I'm going, Jesus. And he's, he's like, God, look at him. He's calling. He needs something. I don't have to worry about, about how to fill an affidavit out for, for my petition. We can see that 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. That there is one God. There's only one God. <laughs> Come on, if we really... There's other gods in the world, but there's only one big G God. There's only one God. One mediator between God and men, and that is the man. It doesn't say a spirit. It says the man. The one who came and died on the cross for you. Christ Jesus is the mediator. He's the one. He's my attorney. I represent the one... This is where it gets a little crazy because I represent the one who represents me. See, I'm the representative of Jesus in this situation, in this circumstance, in this marriage, in this, in this thing, in this whatever going on in my life, in this financial difficulty, in this part of, part of lack, in this, this, this crazy kid thing, in, in, in whatever's going on in your life because we all got it going on. I am his representative. Come on, Watson. <laughs> let, me, let me show you something. I said all of that to say this. Genesis 3, verse 13. And the Lord God called unto the woman. And he said, what is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. When a lie, you know what the word beguiled means? It, it means to seduce or to lie to or to, to make you do something, to, to coerce, right? You into doing something that you shouldn't do. That's what that means. And it, but when a lie is believed to be true, it will not lead to truth. When a lie is believed to be true, it will not lead you to truth. Never. But most definitely to more lies. 
Okay? So, untruth is a barren place. Untruth is a barren place. And one of my favorite verses, John 4, verse uh, 23, 24, it says, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. A little s and a little t. In other words, my spirit and my truth have to go to the Father. Amen? And, and for the Father seeketh such, God is seeking for us to worship him in spirit and in truth, to come to a place where we are honest with him. True truth is the nucleus of fruit in our Christian life. True truth is the nucleus of fruit in our Christian life. That's righteousness. That's Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> James 3.18, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. <laughs> Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2 says, And you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. You walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Let, let, me, let, me just, let me just say this. The devil doesn't own property. He don't own any property. Matter of fact, God gave this earth, this planet to us. He gave us dominion over it. We're the ones that own, the, uh, own this, okay? This is ours. The devil doesn't own property. But I'm going to tell you, that's why the devil doesn't have any power in your life if you are a child of God. He has no power in your life. You don't, you don't have to give him any power in your life. You have to declare to him that he is a loser. Amen? And so if we were to use legal precedent in our life and go to court with him, he would lose every single battle every single time. He will never, ever win. So you have to decide, am I going to serve the, one, the loser <laughs> who has, is the prince of the power of the air? Think about that. Power of the air, power of the air. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just words. Words. It's a lie. But we have the truth in us. Uh, let me just close. <laughs> my, my response is joy. My response is joy. <laughs> I, I, I preached the message, and I don't, remember, I don't remember what message it was, but I, I kept saying, joy check, joy check, joy check. I don't know if you remember that message. And, and I, I would say, <laughs> check your joy. Because if we're victorious, why are we so sad? Why, why, why are we so scared? See, I, I plead the blood over our lives. Amen? I declare that Jesus is the owner. Amen? Of my life, of my soul. I give my life to Him. Amen? Come and be Lord of my life. Now, now I am no longer my own. I'm, I'm His. Amen? <laughs> Sometimes many of us use our circumstances to dictate our joy level, right? <laughs> but if we really believed, see, see, because that's what faith is. Faith is saying, you know what, I really believe something. In the middle of that circumstance, because I think sometimes circumstances come against us like a flat tire, for instance. You're driving along and you get a flat tire. You guess what happens? You got you get out and you start kicking the car, you know, this stupid car, you dumb car, and then and then you you know somebody stops to help you and they're and they're, and they're seeing you be this way to the car, which really has it's inanimate, it doesn't have any feelings, it didn't know it was gonna get a flat tire today, has no idea, just it was designed to move, right? That's all it was. It doesn't know anything, but we we get so concerned about this thing, we forget about the person that's watching me or stop to help me. Me. And that, that was the moment when, when, when their life needed, needed the comfort that I have in me. See, and I, I, I'm going to tell you, circumstances are only there for a reason. And that reason is for me to be a, a comfort to someone else in the middle of it, even if I don't like it. Because often we're not going to like stuff. God, 
I just wish you had fixed Joanne because I just don't like the way I feel right now. You know? And maybe Joanne is trying to pray a prayer saying, God, I wish you would fix Everett because he just doesn't like the way it feels right now, but he's wrong. And i got to come to a place where I can say, you know what? I need to practice my drum because I'm holding the team back. You know? And I don't like it necessarily when she says that to me, but you know what? She's right. Amen? And, you, you, and if God himself was to come and come down and woo, split the, the roof and stand in front of us and say to you, I just don't like your attitude, Pastor Everett, because, you know, I had this going on and that going on and that going on in, my, in your life, and this is what I was trying to do. But you are so stubborn and stupid that you won't listen to me and won't, you won't move in the direction I'm trying to call you into so that you can be all that you're supposed to be because my desire for you is this. I'm preaching now. Got awful quiet in this room. Boy, even Pastor Ever, shut up. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, come on, people. Joy, check. Joy, check. It's not another person that's going to make you happy. It's not another, it's not a million dollars that would make you happy. You'd still find a way to be unhappy if you had a million dollars. You still, if you had a good card, one that didn't break down, one that didn't get a flat tire, one that you didn't have to anoint with oil for every, every uh, couple of weeks. You know, I mean, come on, if we had every, all of the things that we think we need so have, have this desire to have, if we had all of those things, we still wouldn't be happy because we'd find something else to be unhappy about. And, and the completeness of God, the complete work of, of, of Christ in my life is the fact that I am joyful now. Because if I will get joyful now, guess what would happen? Anything would happen other than what's happening right now because I would rise above, I'd start to float above it. I would start to shed off things. People would get tired of me and go in a different direction because they're like, he's always happy, I can't stand being happy all the time. I want to be sad. Go ahead and be sad with someone else. I want the joy of the Lord in my life no matter what it costs. It might cost friends. It might cost me to change. But I want what he wants for me once and for all. And I'm tired of it. All that other stuff, I'm tired of it. Because I am complete. I'm going to decide it right now. I am complete in Christ. Amen? I am above every... I'm a, what's the word say? I am above only. I am not beneath. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am the first. I am not the last. Right? And it, it, it comes from a declaration of... Uh, uh, to my circumstance. I choose joy. I choose to be a comfort so that I can be a comfort to someone else. That's reproduction. We are always going to reproduce like ourself. Come on. Would you like a whole bunch of people in the church that look like Pastor Everett? I hope so. I'm preaching. <laughs> but, but I want to reproduce what's been reproduced in me. Come on, what's being produced in me should be re being reproduced. I don't want a bunch of sad sacks sitting in this church. I want people full of joy. I want people that have the victory in their life. I want people that are declaring to the devil, you know what? You're just a windbag. You're just a windbag, the prince of the power of the air, and you've got no power because God, Jesus, is above every principality, every power. He's the head. You're under my feet, and I mean it. Amen? That's victorious Christian talk right there. And so I'm just asking for somebody to, to use their faith to live it out. That's what I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. And you know what? It changes right now. <laughs> It doesn't change next week. It changes now. It can't change next week if it doesn't change now. This is God. <laughs> if, I had, if I could do it, I, could, I need a rope and hang it from the ceiling and I could hang down like this. I'd wrap my leg around and I'd hang upside down and I'd go, come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, come on, I got you, I got you. And we're like, let me just finish this over here. God is reaching out his hand for you. And he's, 
He, he's reaching out his hand, and I'm going to talk about that next week. He's reaching out his hand. I'm going to talk about that. It's very powerful. He wants to raise you up, amen, to a different place. And we got to go, amen? We got to go. We can't stay here anymore. We can't stay like we were. We can't do it the way we did it yesterday. I can't do it the way I did it today. I can never preach another message like this message, ever. I used to, one, of the, one of my greatest fears when I get done preaching a message and I feel like, wow, I did, I did okay that t- today, is when I, when I walk out the door and I get in the car, I go, what am I going to say next week, God? I have no idea what to say. Because that was a good message. I can never top that message. But I'm going to tell you, there's always going to be another message because he's always going to give me a fresh revelation of who he is. Amen? That's my joy. That's my joy. That's why I, I get up tomorrow morning and I, I open up the Bible and I start reading again. And, and tomorrow afternoon I, I start studying something around and I start, God, God, give me another message. I want to know more. I want to know more about you because I can never get enough of what he's already done in me because I have felt the difference in my life. But it's not about my feeling at all. It's about me knowing, amen, who he is and wanting to know and directing my step. And he's directing my step toward him towards a place that I have no idea what it looks like. But it doesn't matter. That's what faith says. I trust him, amen, with my life. Not my eternal life, my now life. (laughs) If I could just get that, I could smile again. I could go, (laughs) I can't wait to get up tomorrow. I get to go to work. I get to go and sit next to that person that I don't like. (laughs) I hope I get a flat tire. (laughs) I hope I do, because it's an opportunity. It's not to be sad about it. I hope I don't have enough money next week to write the check for the electric bill. Because I know that God is going to be my provider. Amen. Come on. Stand with me. I'm going to pray for us. (laughs) I just wonder when's the last time you had a good belly laugh. I mean... (laughs) I was sitting here thinking about that. I was like, I don't remember the last time I just went out to eat with someone and sat there and laughed the whole time. It's like talking about pie or something. You're just laughing about some banana pie or some cherry pie or some whatever it is that we, not even knowing why we're happy. Okay? Just happy. I'm just happy. Amen? I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. Lord, that you touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. And Lord, that you would come into the expanse of our soul. And Lord, that you would change something, Lord. Redirect us, God. Give us a desire, Lord, to walk in joy, to walk in purpose, to walk in in knowledge of who you are, to understand maybe for the very first time, Lord, that we are complete. (laughs) You made us. God, God formed us and blew into us the breath of life. And Jesus came back and died on a cross so that we would be complete. The work is already finished. And Lord, we give you our life right now. We give you this moment. But Lord, I pray that you start a little fire down inside of us, Lord. And Lord, begin to consume away all of the things and the rudiments of the world, the rudimentary things that hold us back, the traditions, Lord. We, 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 we discard all of that, God, because we know we want you and you alone in our circumstances, God, in our situations, in our prayer life, God, in our study time, Lord, in our marriages, Lord, in our relationships with our kids, Lord, in our, in our, in our people at work, Lord, our, our finances, Lord, our health, Lord, all of the things that are going on, Lord. We just, we just know, we declare right now that we will not... We, <laughs> We will not be discouraged again because the joy of God is in me and I understand who I am. And the devil is a liar. And we, we, we just take authority over him right now and we kick him out. In Jesus' name, we kick him out. We say, get out in Jesus' name. I am a child of God. I declare that right now in this moment. And I have, I possess the joy of the Lord in me. 
I possess the joy of the Lord in me and I will walk that out in every circumstance because you are God, the God that gives all joy. <laughs> Let the joy of the Lord be manifest in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> God is good. God is good. Can we just give him some praise? Amen. God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. We look forward to seeing you soon. Amen.